Can you use Blender without add-ons? Yes, but after using Blender for a while, you will start to realize how difficult it is to do some basic stuff. For example, keyframing multiple objects. Right now, open Blender and try setting keyframe animation for multiple objects at once. You can do this for basic things like rotation, scale, and location by pressing I. But for more complicated things like properties, you can't. One possible way is using Ctrl L to link animation data, but that means all animation data will be copied and linked to the other objects, and any changes you make to one object will affect the other objects. It gets frustrating really quickly, especially if you are animating the location as well, because then all these objects will be clamped in one location since they are using the same animation. Alternatively, an add-on like key selected objects add that functionality of keyframing all properties for multiple objects at once easily into Blender. If you have ever worked in other animation software like After Effects or Cinema 4D, you may be used to certain features that you will automatically expect to exist in Blender, but they don't, like keyframe offset. In After Effects and Cinema 4D, you can easily offset the animation of different selected objects. This makes motion graphics way easier to make. Unfortunately, a feature like this does not exist in Blender, but it's really easy to implement if you use some Python, which is what I did for my add-on quick functions. I just scripted the basic functionality and added it into a button in my add-on. I can offset keyframes linearly, randomly, or in reverse. Some add-ons simply do the impossible, like W Parallax. It introduces a totally new feature that is not built in into Blender. Parallax shading is common in game engines like Unreal Engine and adds depth and detail to what would otherwise be flat surfaces. We all know how much time it would take you to model a single interior like this, but when using Parallax shading, you can easily fake it. An add-on like this is a must for architectural visualization and rendering busy cities with skyscrapers that have interiors. Sometimes it's hard to see the value of an add-on if you are just using Blender as a hobby. For example, the UV tools in Blender are good enough for just about any object you want to unwrap, and it can be difficult to justify getting an add-on like Zen UV for most hobbies. But if you make models professionally where you have to properly UV unwrap objects to industry requirements, then the built-in UV tools won't be enough. Zen UV brings tools like Align, Stack and Unstack Islands, Relax UVs, create trim sheets and a lot of other features that are expected to be supported in a UV system that Blender does not come with. In most cases, you can do everything without add-ons, but that is usually doing things the hard way. Anyone who has tried baking in Blender knows what I'm talking about. Let's say you are baking a color map, a roughness map, ambient occlusion map, metalness, and a normal map. In Substance Painter, you can just press one button and it's done, but in Blender, you have to set up each map differently create a new image, bake it, and save it. Hopefully, you don't save it over other images you have already baked. Otherwise, you will have to repeat the whole process again. This is where add-ons become useful. They simplify complicated processes like this. In this case, the Simple Bake add-on has become my best recommendation for texture baking in Blender. My first time coming across node previews like this was when I was working in Substance Designer. Each node shows you a small preview of what it does or generates, and when you combine different nodes, you can see the results at all stages, taking away the guesswork we have to do when working. The moment I saw this in Substance Painter, all I could think of is why we don't have something like this in Blender. But I guess Gogo was listening to my thoughts on that same day. I saw a video about Node Preview on my YouTube page as a brand new add-on that introduces the same feature in Blender. A testament to how fast the Blender community is. Features that would take too long to implement by the Blender development team are implemented by the community. We need a way to differentiate add-ons. Calling everything add-ons is misleading. Take an example of Polyhaven Asset Browser. It's more of a content library than an add-on. It adds no new functionality to Blender, but brings a ton of value and content. This is what I call a content library. You may be able to use Blender without add-ons, but using it without any content library like this is just throwing away time and time is money, so you're throwing away money as well. Polyhaven is just one of many content libraries. Another useful one is Sancta's library. This, though, is a mix of an add-on and a content library, as all its assets rely on the add-on, and the add-on relies on the assets to work. You're not just dragging the objects from the library into your viewport. You need the add-on to access some functionality. 
other content libraries that rely on add-ons they come with, a geoscatter, which is great for scattering vegetation and objects, but you need objects and vegetations to scatter. So the add-on comes with a library of plants, grass, trees, stones, and more to scatter. We all know what Lego blocks are. It's a bunch of plastic blocks that can be put together in unlimited ways to make anything you want. That's what Blender is. It has operators, it has modifiers, Python scripts, tools, render engines, simulation systems, and the list goes on and on. The Blender team put all these together to make the Blender we know and love. But that was one way to assemble these tools. Addons just reassemble these tools in a different way to make new functionality. A good example is Conform Object. They use already built-in tools like the subdivision modifier, a lattice, and a touch of Python scripting to simplify how you wrap objects onto others. If you follow two-minute papers, then you know that all 3D applications like Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, and others don't write every line of code in their program. All tools start as a research paper that is later implemented in your favorite software. Like Mantaflow, what Blender uses for fluids and smoke simulation. It started as a technical paper presented at SIGGRAPH in 2016. Another example is the whole bullet physics engine that Blender uses for rigid body simulation is open sourced from GitHub. Because all this code is available to the public, sometimes Blender artists think of better ways to implement it in Blender, different from how it's done officially by the Blender team. Case in point, Flip Fluids which uses its own fluid solver to bring better fluid simulations in Blender. Blender is slowly becoming a professional tool, and like other professional tools, they become more and more technical on every update, slowly removing obvious tools like the render buttons in Blender 2.5. There is still a hair system in Blender. It's being phased out in favor of geometry nodes for hair. It seems the particle system will also have the same fate, and so will other tools. Professional tools provide a best starting point and building blocks for you to make your own tools. That is why Houdini is so hard to use. Same reason why some tools in Blender are also hard to use, like the cloth tool. It's easy to make cloth fall on other objects, but try to make a t-shirt or a dress or a trouser. The cloth simulation tool is just a starting point and you have to build the tools to help you use it more effectively. And those tools are what we call add-ons. I don't like the Simply Cloth Pro. It's built on top of the Blender Cloth simulation tool, but brings in new functionality, new tools to make it easier for you to interface with the simulation system. So to answer the original question, can you use Blender without add-ons? Yes, but it's going to get harder and harder on each update. When new features are added to Blender, this means there are going to be less time to work on new tools for these new features. So you will see fewer buttons and everything will become more technical because developers are working on new features and do not have time to add new buttons and new tools that do basic things like a button that sews closes. The functionality is there, but the button to easily do it is not there, like offsetting keyframes or setting keyframes for multiple objects or pressing a button to render. It's going to get harder and harder to use Blender without add-ons as Blender gets better. This happens to all professional softwares. That's why studios always have a technical artist to create tools like add-ons for their artists. And this is what the Blender add-on community is. They are technical artists to bridge the gap between Blender features and artists who wants to easily use these features. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.